this is Hubert from Traveling with Hubert. Uh, this is um, January. Uh, we've made it to 2024. Wishing every one of you a blessed new year. And I pray that this one's going to be better for you uh, than the one that just ended. Uh, whatever that may mean for you. Uh, seeing our videos. Uh, thank those who have subscribed to our channels, who leave us comments, who mash that thumbs up button, and, and who share this with other people. Uh, Y'all very, very special people to us. Have a blessed day. We're turning at this intersection. This is US 19 North. And if you go to the left, that's US 280 going to Plains, Georgia. And we're headed to our first house. America's Tour of Homes, I guess that's what it's called. It just says driving tour map on the paper that we have. West Church Street. Rough railroad track. You laughing, honey? Why? It's always been rough. <laughs> yeah. And roads are bad too. This one seems to be always always seems to be rough. Another railroad track. past Shivers Lumber, Lumber Company uh, and these offices on the left this is a residential section it's Habitat Road Street I don't know whether I'm going to be able to stop or not huh? I'm going to stop people stop on the side of the road over here they do I guess you can if you put your blinker on, just pull over out that way. Yeah. This is it up here, isn't it? Four oh four right here. This eighteen fifties cottage combines the symmetry of the Greek Revival with an interesting early Victorian lattice decoration on the porch. Early photographs show that the porch originally extended down the sides of the house 
to recess wings on either side. At some point in the first half of the 20th century, the wings were cut off and made into separate houses. This mid-Victorian house was built around 1879. The columns on the front porch are an early 20th century alteration to the house. Hold on. Is that, yeah, it does have a sign on it. 323 West Church Street. 323 Street. West Church Street. Right. <clears throat> this one down here is 130. It's on down here by Jackson Street, though. Somebody's doing something with that, see? Yeah. That's this one, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. This large house was built in 1858. Like other late antebellum buildings, it combines proportions of the Greek revival with early Victorian decorative trim. This is the only large antebellum house in America to have retained its original facade unchanged. The Methodist Church was built in 1925 after its predecessor had been destroyed by fire. Uh, it typifies the renewed interest in classical forms in the early 20th, early 20th century. Built in 1901 and 1902 by prominent local banker Lee Cancel as a wedding gift to his bride, this red brick and terracotta mansion 
is an example of Italian Renaissance revival. Now, the headquarters of the Sumter Historic Trust, the Lee Council House, is a popular venue for wedding receptions and other events. It is pretty on the inside. That's where they had a thing after a bed. Yeah. I think it cost $300. It'd probably be a thousand these days, honey. Well, going back there, it's a swing pool. Yeah. Oh, it was. This house built in 1890 for prominent attorney and America's mayor, E.A. Hawkins, uh, is a shingle-style residence that was designed by Gottfried Norman, who also designed the Windsor Hotel. This charming turreted house of the 1880s typifies the free-ranging eclecticism common to the period. And yeah. the next one is this, I'm pretty sure it's that greenhouse right there. Well, they've been, somebody redid that house recently. Yeah. Built around 1912, this house is a terrific example of the early 20th century craftsman style with shingle walls, wide overhanging eaves, knee braces, deep porch, and ingenious built-in cubby holes. And that looks like that's all I'm going to tell you on this street. Anyway, you know this house, I'm talking about this house right here. It's kind of big. This one? Yeah, well, the front of it, yeah, all this yeah. right here. Okay. Um, and then that bed and breakfast is right under. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where you can park. I'll find a place, honey. You see, it's got the sign right there. Yeah, I see it, honey. Number nine. And then that blue one over there is number 10. Yeah. Uh, and then on down below there is 11 and 12. Down that way? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, and I don't know where well, these people parked on the side of the yeah. road. This is way down there. I'm just going to pull right in here and park at the Sumter County thingy.
This house is a pleasant antebellum cottage with jigsaw scroll work added to its porch in the late 19th century. This house, now a bed and breakfast inn, was built before the Civil War and it was enlarged and remodeled during the 1800s. Built around 1890 for banker Malcolm Council, this is a particularly palatial example of the late Victorian Queen Anne style. smaller version of its massive neighbor. This house was built around 1905 and it represents the last gasp of the Queen Anne style. Reese Park School was built as America's High School in 1910. It's a classical revival structure which now houses the local Chamber of Commerce and Payroll Development Authority. Well, there's probably more traffic over here now. They got that bridge closed over here. Yeah. I mean, I've come this way anyway, mm -hmm. but a lot of people be going down Reese Street. Okay, that's. This blue one. shutters, yeah, yeah. and then that big white house was under. Uh. In the nineteenth century, farmers often maintained town residences as well as homes on their remote farms. In 1870, the townhouse of the Maxwell family on this site was destroyed by fire. In the reduced circumstances of the Reconstruction era, the family had their modest farmhouse moved into town to replace it. The front rooms with their floor-length windows were added at that time, a further remodeling around 1915-1920 gave the house its current roof line and square porch pillars.
This house was built around 1872 to replace an earlier house which had burned. Uh, this interesting residence combines features of the late antebellum period, such as low pitch roof, wide bracketed eaves, and large six over six windows with mid-Victorian asymmetry. This handsome Greek revival house built between 1856 and 1859 is one of the finest surviving antebellum buildings in the city. Note the exceptionally tall windows, the wide corner pilasters, and the fine Doric and tabulature. The columned portico was added about 1910. <laughs> 